Hello, and welcome back to another pen talk. Yes, uh, we need to delineate between pen talk and bike talk. This is a pen talk. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following this journey as I explore the wide world of pens. And we see two of them rotating in front of us, being held up by crabs. So obviously, they are crab and turntable worthy. I think I'm being quite liberal with that judgment, but these are two different pens, two pens I bought to just explore them. Uh, we're going to explore them. We're going to talk about their pluses, their minuses, how well they write. They certainly do have a nice look about them. I think Pen BBS probably is the one that really brought the hand-turned acrylic pen market to the forefront from Jap from China. And these are some of the latest examples of that. They both have some interesting design traits. They both uh, probably appeal to a different customer depending upon your preferences and what you like and what you enjoy. They are somewhat on the expensive side, um, about $20 plus or minus a couple. So when uh, many of us back in the old days uh, were used to paying a couple dollars for Chinese pens, paying $20 was something that really wasn't done very often. Now that's normal, but I think these pens are of sufficient quality and build, design, engineering, that I think $20 is a reasonable price for these pens. So let's take a look and see why. The crab will wink as it turns around. They're butt to butt. They like holding up pens. We're going to dive into this pen first. I consider it somewhat of a generic pen. The name of the pen is the same as the name of the seller, which is interesting. So is this uh, someone in uh, China who goes to factories and maybe buys lots of pens, generic pens not labeled, and sells them? The cap comes off in a little over two turns. With those block threads, I would expect less turns, but no. And the first thing you'll notice, other than the pen being on the light side, is this uh, section is fairly small, but it's suited for that number five nib. So from that viewpoint, aesthetically, it's, it's done well. The pen fits okay in the hand. Uh, again, that section is smaller than I like. You don't really feel the threads. You don't feel that little bit of a step up there. I think it fits okay in the hand, my medium size hands. And from the design, it does post. It's a little bit high, makes it for a little bit long pen, but certainly usable for those that like to post. I've disassembled the Chiswit. I'm not going to try to butcher the name. No vowels in it. This is a nice upscale converter. You know, nice metal band, nice metal collar here, pulls it apart. Yes, it has a spring in there, which I will remove. Then, number five nib and feed pulled out easily from the section. And it looks like it should unscrew, but if you look in there, you'll see that it's glued in place, which some manufacturers seem to like to do. I think we're going to bring in the LED x-ray and a little bit of sun and explore this resin. There's a little bit of sunlight coming in through the blinds that I have down. So we'll bring in the LED light. There is some uh, transparency to the resin. It certainly is a nicely done. Some pearlescence chips in there. You know, it's the classic clip design cap band. And if we look inside, we'll just see that that Top is glued in place, doesn't seem to be any uh, metal threads and could be a, a little 
plastic insert there that might act like a nice little cap liner. Kind of like the Pen BBS, I think, 491 or 490. Again, I really, I like the resin, which is really what attracted me to the pen. You know, fit and finish are nice. Yeah, kind of like those block threads there, which are good. And obviously those that may have doubted me can look inside and see that glue that's glued in that nib assembly. Here are some uh, cracked ice green pens that I would put in the family. But none of these are the same. Got the Pen BBS in uh, Kryptonite, uh, Moon Man, I think M300, somewhat of a generic uh, cap pen. I'll put links to the reviews, and here is the whatever. Again, interesting resins. Um, the mishmash of designs here. But the pen certainly fits in to this group. I chose to do this pen second because I think it's a better pen. And yes, it costs a few dollars more, but it's still in that, you know, relatively high end of the affordable Chinese pen market. The sleeve that it came in identifies it as an ad monk. We'll see what that translation of the Chinese is, and maybe that's the model, K07-1. But overall, you know, the pen has a little bit more heft to it than the first pen I reviewed. The cap comes off in about one and three quarter turns. Nice that the section's the same material as the pen. It has that Schmidt number five nib, which is not my favorite nib, but sometimes it can be a good writer. It fits fine in the hand. That section is slightly larger than the uh, first pen, the green one. So it feels a little bit more comfortable in my hand. It's about as small a section as I like to deal with. Uh, the threads are okay, and that step up is okay. You do feel it, but not something that would preclude you from holding it there. And as you would expect, based on the look and design, it does post nice, deeply, securely. It adds a little bit of weight to it. I would enjoy writing with this posted. So that's this pen. We'll take it apart, show you the different bits and pieces. But overall, from a design viewpoint, I certainly enjoy this pen quite a bit. Well, I've taken apart the Mo Jing, or... Some uh, viewer said it's pronounced more junk, but it means in Chinese, last artisan. Interesting phonetics, language. This resin in the sunlight certainly pops and looks quite nice. Kind of reminds me of uh, Autumn from Pen BBS. Very uh, nicely sculptured functional clip, which is always good. It's a standard uh, number five Schmidt nib assembly that screws in to the section, which has that metal insert, which I like. Adds stability and strength. To me, the downside to this is this very low-end converter, which is typical of the converter that Schmidt might use. If you look on their website, you'll see a number of converters. This is the bottom-end one. So let's darken the room and play the LED on this resin. Now we're going to bring in the LED light. Again, I just enjoy how different lights make these resins look differently. You can see different features. Yeah, that pearlescence is nice. Good combination of colors. Kind of does remind you of autumn. And a little bit of translucency. Very well machined. Obviously, we're going to look inside the cap and we'll see a nice cap liner. You know, holds in the clip. Yeah, this really shows off that resin quite nicely. 
And as we see, the uh, cap band is labeled, but certainly not more junk. Here we have some sunlight shining on two Pen BBS Autumn pens, the 308 and the 456, and certainly you can see the similarities in the resins. They all have yellows, oranges, reds, greens, and they all vary. This is one of those resins where no two pens will look alike. But I do like the colors, I do like the resin. And the Mojing holds up to these Pen BBS models and at a price point that is in between the 308. But I think Autumn is a little bit of a premium, so it's probably one of the more affordable Autumn resin pens. Now it comes to the inking up and the writing part and also the editorial part of the review. I chose this ink because I think it would work well. It's worked well in every pen I put it in. I love these new Birmingham inks that they're making in-house. Great colors. Uh, some of them have some incredible sheen. Interesting chromatography. You can see where that red sheen might be coming from. I also ordered four more bottles of Birmingham ink, including a large bottle of Tesla coil. So I enjoyed doing a review of these two pens from China, both made out of turned acrylic resin, plastic, whatever you want to call it. Both of them have a very nice look to them. This one's a little bit of more unique resin. This one is a little bit more of a common resin, probably not common to everybody, but for us Pen BBS collectors, we recognize Autumn. So after using these pens for a couple days, writing with them with the same ink on multiple papers, it's very easy for me to pick the winner between these two pens. It's this pen here. The Ad Mock. It just writes better. Feels very good in the hand. Has a little bit more weight to it, which to me is, is hits a sweet spot for weight. And uh, yes, the cap takes almost two turns to get off. And that section could be a little bit bigger. The number five nib works fine. I'm not uh, fixated on having a big nib. So that's the winner of this group. This comes in a number of different colors. So Doug did a review on this pen in a different color. He bought as a gift for a friend. And he had a challenge with the nib, which uh, apparently happens a lot with pens that Doug gets. So I took some close-up pictures of this nib. And uh, yes, the slit is a little bit off-center. But it doesn't impact my writing at all. And we'll look at the writing shortly. So this pen just doesn't feel as good in the hand. As soon as you pick it up after having this pen in your hand, you feel it feels kind of light. It doesn't have any substantial feel to it. I mean, it's a nice finish. That little bottom of the cap has some sharpness to it, which uh, might concern some people if you run your thumb this way or finger this way. It's not branded. And the cap takes a little bit over two turns to get off. And you'll see even smaller section with a generic number five nib. There's nice block threads there, but the problem I have with this pen is it doesn't seal. So I had both of these pens sit for two days. This one I had to wet the nib to get the ink to come out. This one I just touched nib to paper and it wrote. Same ink in both pens stored in the same location, in the same orientation, so this pen definitely uh, does not stay wet. And that's another negative on regards to using it. So let's see how these two nibs write. And then maybe you'll have a an appreciation for the one I like the best. So we're ready to put nib to paper. And you could post this pen it gets fairly long, and I wouldn't do that with a writing sample because I would hit the camera that's over the pen. 
it just doesn't feel good in my hand. You don't feel the thread, you don't feel the step up, but that section is just tiny. This pen also seems to always have uh, ink creep on the nib, so the nib always has a little bit of ink on top of it. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of this pen. Uh, too many consonants. That might be an abbreviation for something. And yes, a little bit of a hard start. So this nib requires pressure to write. You know, without putting pressure on it, once it gets flowing, it writes okay. Yeah, the nib does open up a little bit if you put some pressure on it, but that's not how it's designed to write. It's definitely a fine line. And once it gets flowing, it works okay. It has a decent amount of feedback, which is, is even a little bit more than I like. It is relatively smooth, other than that feedback issue. So what I would do with this nib is, is I would do some micro mesh grinding, figure eights or whatever. Because so I think it might have a little bit of baby's bottom, which explains the hard starts and the requirement to, to keep a lot of pressure on the nib to get it to write consistently. So overall, not a pleasure to write with in my perspective. So if I was going to rate this pen, uh, I can't give it more than a 4.5. You know, the nib's not one that is enjoyable for me to write with. Uh, yes, I enjoy the resin, but it's a very lightweight, very small section. It's well made for what it is, and there is an interesting bit of color there, but, you know, for pens are made to write with, and this one doesn't do anything for me. So we're going to take the ink out of it and put it aside. You're not going to hear the nib very well because we have uh, some major uh, tree work being done in our neighbor's property, so there's a lot of uh, background noise. I mean, but this nib is just a pleasure to write with. It's the best Smit nib I've ever used, and it's decently wet. It's smooth. You just get a hint of feedback, unlike the other nib which was pretty intense feedback so let's rate this pen I'm gonna give it an 8.5 and the nib gets one check and I like the look so the look gets one check so this pen I could use on a regular basis I could use on a daily basis and I think that makes it a good pen to have. And you don't see that ink creep on the nib like you did on the other pen. So there's a lot of uh, variations. But, you know, from a 4.5 to an 8.5, I think we have a, the winner here. Even though it costs a few dollars more, it's, I think, better well-made, better components. Fit and finish on both of these pens are about the same. The clips work about the same, but... You know, this one just has that nice little swoop design, which puts it in a different category. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you find a pen you fall in love with and enjoy putting nib to paper and making a design on that paper with ink that's in your pen. The design could be letters and script or Spencerian or how many other different types of fonts there are out there that you could make with a fountain pen. Write a letter, write in your journal, and just take grocery notes. So 
whatever you want to do. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. We've reached the end. And this, this snib just continues to work well for me. We'll say bye until the next video. Nice.